at the oil level. And actually this may be better than I thought. I, I was expecting the oil to be pretty black, but get a fresh reading. And so we are just under just slightly uh, well we're slightly at the the just okay we are slightly under the max fill line okay so uh in the grand scheme of things what i'm doing is not going to hurt this engine at all but the oil is actually relatively clean so here's what i'm going to do as we're moving on to the oil change so one Let's tackle these filters and same scenario on the GLK 350. Bam, 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 bam. Four. Let's grab our little Torx screwdriver. And I actually do have car fender covers. Um, they're just not at the location that I am right now, so let me slow down, obviously, I'll reposition this so that I don't scratch this, this guy's car, or that you don't scratch your own car. But what I mean is fender covers, you know, that would actually lay over um, protect the paint. Okay. And first loosen, and then you just pull apart. Okay, actually, we're going to. Pull this out so that we can see all the crap that may come out. Okay, nothing that came out of the box, but of course, and I keep good lord cringing. Apologize, be careful, don't scratch your damn car, don't scratch your paint. I'll, I'll, but we can see, filthy. Placement. Crash. Before we put this in. And just do a quick wipe out. Self. Okay, that goes in. As you can see, it recesses itself down. Okay, so seat it, then put it back together. Turn it. Run down your screw. Again, we, once it seats, it's good. Okay. Boom, done. Working in a diagonal pattern. Seats, good. We're going into plastic. You can strip plastic very easily. There's no need to have a lot of force or torque down on these screws. It seats, it's done. Again, you, I can't turn it anymore with just my fingers. That's enough. Don't go cranking down on this thing. Whenever you're, you know, going, screwing into plastic, when it seats, it's, it's done. All right, that's done. Box number two.
tell you what, with, uh, with the amount of work between last night on the GLK and today with this car, even though my son is being a son, okay, pretty clean up top. But I think uh, I think I've earned myself some sort of uh, steak and a beer or something. So we're gonna get this car back to my buddy, and then there we go. Okay. Full of crap. Filter full of crap. Wipe it down. I mean, technically, we could stand to run some suds through this thing, but uh, we're good. Or maybe even some some brake cleaner spray, but uh, I'm not wasting my brake cleaner on that particular application. It's good. Get the dust out, clean out your box, new air filter in, seed it, put it back together. Okay? camera got to make sure I'm still rolling yes I am I'm going to uh, plug in some power just in case don't want to lose this footage all right there's power ooh 11% not exactly the charging pipe but okay bam this connector twisted out so line it up twist that's secure we put our connector over the top so it's readily visible see this sensor swivels so it goes back in its home lock down push in your retainer clip okay. and it's back in its home push down on the grommets okay good to go there grab our trusty screwdriver flathead forget to tighten your clamps. Just make sure that's in there. Okay, that's in there. Okay, once you feel the tension come out, quarter turn, good. It's sealed. You want to make sure that, uh, again, you don't over tighten, but that you've got enough force on the clamp that uh, you don't bring in more air than the car is looking for, which could be considered a 
potential vacuum leak or okay there we go. All right. tension is out quarter turn good let's check out these intake tubes did I even choose the right ones Upper. There we go. All right. Now. Right. So I gotta open this up a little bit. There we go. One, two. Is it on there? Yes, it is on. So it does appear I chose the right ones, but again, you know, not not the the best quality. But in the grand scheme of things, where the car came in with none. <laughs> because the other ones have completely disintegrated. We're still working with what, or not working with, but we're still better off than what we had, which was nothing. Okay, that's on, and bam. Now, let me bring you in here real quick. See that? That's, uh, that's a problem. We shouldn't see uh, dried coolant but you can also see that it's orange okay whereas the GLK 350 was blue so if you've watched that video and maybe by chance you're watching this one there is a difference okay so uh, orange fluid is not the same as blue fluid orange and blue fluid is not the same as green fluid green and blue so forth and so on purple blah 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 use the correct fluid so um, I actually should have been looking at that but i can just take this back off uh and, and see what i find out as far as why we've got coolant build up there because this engine has to run for a while with what i'm about to put in it all righty what's the view okay good view all right so we have our air boxes back in place the air intake tubes are in place. Um, everything, well, ignition coils are torqued. No, well, they're they're torqued by Julian's standard, the Julian foot pounds. Uh, the spark plugs were indexed correctly. Um, auxiliary batteries done. So. Let's remove our oil cap, and in fact, we're just going to trash this because it's cracked there, it's cracked there, uh, and I believe I saw some potential plasticizing, or basically the uh, the gasket is kind of going bad anyway. So.
we had a remedy for that, which is a new oil filler cap. Test fit. And it, oh man, yes, perfect. Very good fit. Nice and tight. Okay. Now, for this application for the oil change, uh, again, one of my processes. I, I kind of almost do it really as a general practice. So uh, when it's time for the oil change, I'm, I'm usually at about, you know, 8,000 to 8,500 miles. I don't go the full 10,000 miles. Um, with the exception of GLK, that's a different story. Okay, so um, it, is it a reasonable belief or assumption that there may be sludge inside of this particular engine. I'm going to say if there is, it's probably nothing to be concerned with, but I try to um, ensure that we don't have any issues with sludge. So um, there is a particular brand, uh, BG. I forget what BG stands for, neither here nor there. I'm sold on it, damn near everything they make, but they have a very, very nice uh, engine flush kit. Um, for this particular application, uh, it was not in the budget. So uh, the next best thing and what is my mainstay, and I don't think that this engine really needs that level of service, okay? I just don't. That's, just, that, that's the reasoning. I just don't. is Marvel's mystery oil. Plethora of uses for this stuff. Um, and where I, I've, I've actually, I've always been aware of it, but I didn't really think much of it until I was watching, um, uh, is it, um, Chasing Classic Cars with, uh, um, well, good Lord, now I can't even, with Wayne, Wayne Kareem. Uh, you know, he, he, he deals with very high-end cars, you know, vintage models. Um, his dad's friend, uh, you know, if he's hopefully still alive and if he's even still working. But, you know, that guy <laughs> is working on, you know, 20 Duesenbergs and so forth and so on. So he knows his crap. But when Wayne is, is looking at uh, a potential buy, and he feels like, okay, well, damn, the engine may be locked. Or even when he's found engines that have been locked up, to get them free, you know, he's used Marvel Mystery. Okay, well, let's put a little Marvel's Mystery oil down in the cylinders, let it work its way, and I'll be damned if that engine didn't start turning. And then I started looking into the product, and I'm thinking, okay, well, if, if Wayne Carini is using this on vintage high-end cars, <laughs> then I'm sold. So, uh... Whether I got sold a bill of, of uh, bad goods or not, I'm using this stuff. But I use this also to, uh, I put it in the crankcase, and then it kind of helps loosen up, you know, whatever sludge or crap and crud might be in the system. Uh, so that's what I'm using in lieu of the more expensive BG product. I am going to forego the funnel. Will I make it? Will I be lucky? Boom. Notice how I'm pouring this. This bottle actually has some engineering and most oil or fluid containers like this are designed to work this way. You can see it's not glug, 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 glugging. Putting in the whole bottle. The whole bottle. See how I'm pouring it this way? It makes for better airflow. You pour it in that way, 
you'll get the glug, 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 and you'll get a mess. I had the tiniest bit of mess, which is why I did not, I, I, I forwent, <laughs> I know that's not a word, I forwent the funnel. Okay, so, one quart of Marvel's Mystery Oil. Uh, again, um, ordinarily for this car, I would have at least changed the oil, and I say sacrificial oil, so I wouldn't have necessarily cared, you know, what, as long as it was, you know, 5W30, 0W40, because uh, I'm throwing it away. Uh, I just want clean engine so that one, I can get a different perspective on how that oil, how clean oil comes out, right? But where I was expecting to see black oil, it's not the case. Uh, so it's good enough for me for this particular purpose. I missed. All right, we're going to put our cap back on. But what I am going to do is satisfy my OCD so that that faces off. <laughs> and then uh, I am going to uh, have to take off this side again. I'm going to have to take it all the way off. Okay, so where is my Um, uh, Whitney Houston, we have a problem. Where is my freaking oil cap wrench? Um, this is really no boy, no. Oh boy. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not dead in the water, but. Uh, I cannot find my oil cap wrench. Damn it. You know, just when you think you've cleaned uh, <laughs> that case. Okay, uh, I've got a how to process from you guys. Um, so, um, one, you have you have a wrench, but e e effectively think of it as, as really a big socket, okay? But it's designed to fit on top of this oil filter cap, okay? Or you can move this out of the way, move uh, this lower, uh, turbo pipe and then you have the clearance to get on a um, rubber strap type of wrench okay uh, <laughs> I cannot find either of my tools so 
I have to go a different route. I'm not showing it because it will thoroughly embarrass me and cause the internet to melt down amongst, you know, again, put the people that know better. So, um, got to do what I got to do. All right, guys and gals and gals and guys, I did what I had to do, but oil filter is released. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting on a, a sacrificial filter, okay? So, Just looking in between the filament, uh, the element, paper element, don't see any metal or anything like that. So, uh, good sign, but obviously, you know, engine oil is old, so let's get this out of the way. this purpose only need it tightened by hand so by hand is just fine and on top of which again I'm not going to show you how I actually got that off but again there is a proper tool uh, that's that's a but it's called it's called an oil filter wrench um, even though it's a cap, it's a socket-like cap. It's called a wrench. Or, like I said, you can actually get um, the rubber type of wrench where it's a strap, you wrap it around, it's got some teeth and bear down, and then it would release uh, the wrench. It's off. Okay. Boom. Let's put... Uh, back on and then we are going to start this engine and then I'm going to attempt to set the accelerator uh, to maybe just about I don't know 1500 rpm nothing nothing too crazy the BG product requires that you run the engine at 3000 rpm I think it's for for 30 minutes um, and that'll, you know, help the process break down um, for this particular application because, again, mystery oil is completely different than the BG product. So I'm just going to, um, you know, mimic, but just at a slightly low. But idle, um, idle is, is not going to do much. And I guess... Yeah, I guess while I'm waiting for uh, the BG to cycle through, because I'm just going to run this for just 15 minutes, uh, we can plug up the scan tool and then clear codes and then, you know, see if any, which, you know, we won't really know if anything is going to come back until we actually drive it, but we've got to, we've got to do the test drive. So let me, uh. Bring over the scan tool, grab the key, which I believe is already in here.
embarrassed am I? Goodness gracious. And you all, you all sat here and let me do this. Mission coil wires. Yeah, it's not the end of the world, okay? All we did was just create more misfires. <laughs> I could feel the car wasn't running right, so um, that was the first thought. Hey, buddy, uh, you forgot to put the ignition coil wires back there. Then you all let me do it. How dare you? And I know, I know somebody was over there screaming, hey, dude, you going to put those connectors back on? Yeah, I am, after I put it all back together. And... the mistake. I made it. Did I admit it? Yeah, I made it. All right, keep admitting it. Yeah, I made it. <laughs> All right, let's start the car back. Please join me on the other side of the moon. Maybe a little lower. Okay, we need to get some power over here. I can tell you that this thing already sounds 100% better. Uh, the idle change, I think before the idle was sub, I think it was close to a thousand RPM. Uh, we're, we're just at about, what, eight, eight hundred. Um, immediately, let's, let's get rid of that message, okay. Um, before, we were immediately getting, uh, the auxiliary battery messages. That's actually corrected itself right off the bat, okay. Get you positioned a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Uh, the check engine light was also on. It's immediately gone away. So we're already off on a on a, 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 a great foot. Now the codes are still going to be there, but the car is is a lot happier. I can even hear it. Okay. Oof. Sick. So, I'm sorry, let me, let me see how the, oh, you can see enough of it. An intelligent diagnosis. I'm not going to do a, a full scan. It's going to take too long. Um, I also said I was going to get the engine up to, you know, somewhere about 1,500 to 2,000. So uh, while I'm in here, I'm just going to use the foot. But um, like I said, I'm going to let the engine run for about 15 or 20 minutes to allow the the, uh, the mystery oil to work its magic. Um, 
but then I'll, I'll rig up something between the seat and the accelerator to get it to, you know, hold it about that uh, 1500 to 2000 RPM. So like I said, in the meantime, let's see what, what our diagnosis is. What our skin tool is there. You're going to try this process with the uh, with the uh, mystery oil, or it, you can you can you can run sea foam in the crankcase, but it's with it's in conjunction with an oil change. Or if you're going to go the BG product route, it's meant to it's meant to be run um, with the car in place. You don't drive around with the stuff in there. based on the S500 platform. Uh, so, I don't know if that was interesting or not. But you, you have some uh, Mercedes-Benz enthusiasts who will not refer to, you know, their S550 as the S550 off the bat. They may say, oh, the w, my W222, you know, they like to use the, the, the factory nomenclature. So, health report. And you can see again, like I said, I'm not doing a full system. What I'm doing, it's a quick test. I just want to, I, I need a, I need a high level view. I, I don't want to wait a whole, you know, eight, nine minutes to run a full system scan. The ECM, before we were red, I, I, it, it may turn out I may not have to clear anything.
Okay. Misfire, 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 misfire. That's from when <laughs> you all let me uh, start the car without connecting the ignition coil. So that's what these stuff these are. So some of this stuff is is actually from from before. Um, the additional battery has a malfunction. So again, the message has gone away from the information center but the code is still set it's still stored okay but it's no different than what was there before but battery communication that's that's akin that that's in conjunction with battery implausible data possibly communication but battery related so point being, nothing has really changed other than the misfires I created by forgetting to plug in the ignition cord. So, we're just going to clear. Let's see if anything comes back. And it may be I, I'll have to run a clear session with the car in accessory mode. Then I'll have to shut the engine off, put it in accessory mode, and then run a, a clear code. You may have seen a message pop up on the information center. That was because of the scan tool. Running the scans and tests on the different modules. Okay. So I still have my misfires going. So chances are I'll probably have to uh, run a clear, like I said, with, with the car not running. So. Uh, Let's, let's just go ahead and pause the video here. I'll finish this, uh, this idle cycle with the, uh, um, with the mystery oil. And then when I shut the car off, I'll run a clear code and see if we get, you know, an all clear. Excuse me for blocking. Alrighty, friends, we are back. The um, uh, the oil cycle with the um, with the Marvel's Mystery Oil, it's it's run its cycle. So I'm just going to allow the engine to you know cool off a tad, um, but essentially um, um, letting the oil drain back down as much as possible down to the pan so like I said in the meantime let's see if we can get rid of these codes so what I mean by accessory mode with a push to start engine you with your key you know available in the car uh, one tap on the button uh, gives you the ability to you know listen to the radio so forth and so on the second tap is accessory mode. That's what I mean by putting the car in accessory mode. Okay. Um, let's go back. Let's do another health report. And I didn't realize, uh, buddy. Oh, okay. So we actually did some correcting on its own. It dropped quite a few of those misfires. Um, Hit up, okay, AC, 
All right, I knew about that. So that should always come back. Um, one of the uh, vent controllers um, or vent flaps isn't working. And that's, that's, that's it. Okay, so let's see if we just run clear codes. Because I am hopeful that we don't have anything on the ECM side. But I can tell you, uh, you know, right off the bat, this, this car is far happier. Okay, so there we go. We are clear on ECM. And that's what I want to see because when I go for the test ride, hopefully nothing comes back. Okay. Um, again, the AC should always come back. And then the head up display, the control unit was switched off improperly. Uh, let's go in here. Um, let this car cool off. And uh, again, I'll just keep the camera rolling. I'll get it jacked up so that I can get underneath, pull the plug, drain the oil, put the plug back in, put new oil in, button this car up. And it's done. See you in a little while. Alrighty, I am back. As you can see, I've got uh, I've got the car up on ramps. It didn't drive up because the front's too low, um, so it's it's been jacked up on um, car ramps. Um, I can't quite use the tripod for this particular instant but I'm at the point to where I am about to pull the oil drain plug and it's not the traditional bolt rather it is um, it's a plastic plug so uh, luckily we've got a splash shield here um, and that would be just fine for um, I need a little bit more light down here okay sorry about the camera angle um, let's get you disconnected okay so that's the drain plug, okay. Um, now, uh, like I said, I've got um, I've got a um, Marvel's Mystery oil additive in here, and what it's done, it has essentially liquefied the oil. Okay, it's thinned it out. Uh, hopefully, we've got you know again gunk and crud that's going to come out, but it's going to come out in uh, a torrential um, arc so hopefully I won't mess up my phone but we get a flathead screwdriver on this plug oh maybe, maybe it is a traditional plug it's just covered with the plastic but it is kind of neat that it is a flathead so um, I don't want to mess up any of my equipment but and this oil is still kind of hot but uh, oh good Lord, let me okay I'm sorry about the camera Woo. Nike 
easy trying to contort yourself. See how see how very fluid <laughs> that is. Not oil viscostic like at all. And I know viscostic isn't a word. There we go. Okay. But you can see it's still, you know, it, it's pretty clear. Well, I mean, obviously it's dark, but not dark enough that you can't see through it. Okay. So, um, you know, it's not to say that, uh, there, there wasn't no sludge, you know, at all, but, uh, um, it, it's definitely not bad enough that, uh, you know, it's just completely dark, but, um, you know, I think it's only getting darker now because the flow is starting to slow. If we bring the light over, or maybe we are getting, you know, crap and crud that was uh, settled. So either way, I'm still pretty, uh, pretty happy with the outcome here. All right, we're gonna just move our oil pan forward a little bit. And it is definitely time to uh, to dump my catch pan, but we'll just let that drain. Actually, we're going to go up top. Okay, let's go up top. Oof! Sorry, sorry, sorry. We'll go up top. get this out of the way it was only on hand tight to begin with so let's see if I have enough yeah. well I've got some pretty strong hands apparently good lord all back in the tripod. Alrighty. Get our oil cap off. was the sacrificed filter just to see how dirty it would actually get um, and it was kind of brown brand new to begin with so again nothing that's deposited so you know um, obviously we can't you know look inside the engine to see if we got crud in there but um, you know, I'm relatively comfort, comfortable that, uh, you know, it, it's done some, some bit of work. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm not seeing, you know, anything that's concerning. So we're going to just run a thin film of, uh, oil on the new o-ring take off the old o-ring put on the new o-ring come on there we go it's seated in its position get our new filter that in you should hear a click put our new filter back in and again I dare not show you the method in which I removed said oil cap oil filter cap I 
I have shared with you what the proper tools are that you need to have. I don't know why I cannot find either of mine, but apologies, I am I am cramping something crazy. Um, but essentially, the top of the torque wrench, um, which again I, I explained, is it's kind of like just a big old socket, but it's designed to fit uh, each facet on this oil cap but the top of it basically has an open end like that so you'll be able to put your ratchet head right on it okay and then and they actually used to make the cap with that on I don't know why they stopped making it that way good lord uh, a, a basic ingenious design and then you take it away um, so you just put your torque wrench on top okay run it down and then 25 newton meters which is 23 so if 23 was about 18 25 should be about 20 so 20 foot pounds of torque it's not a lot but the reason i'm saying that is because you know the traditional oil filter the metal the metal spin on uh the rule of thumb is you know once it seats hand tight and that's it um, again, um, I'm just, I'm just not going to show it. So, uh, be mad, <laughs> be mad with me, but, uh, I'm going to, I, I need to, uh, tighten this oil filter cap. Alrighty. Oil filter cap is tight. I am going to. I am going to replace the air intake tube. Oh, another thing that uh, I can blame you all for, because um, again, you all you all saw it. But I, I just need to acknowledge that, that I did catch. Uh, I forgot to um, put the, uh, the rubber, uh, those rubber foam insulators back under the air boxes. But again, that was a simple, you know, fix. I uh, just, you know, loosened the, uh, the clamps, took the air box out, slipped the insulators back in, no problem. Okay, now it's time to no don't do it yeah i know i'm going underneath to put the drain plug back in <laughs> yeah you see cash gold for you uh fluid files it's not mobile one well got that right it's not mobile one you know why because <laughs> Actually, I couldn't find Mobile One. Um, and Royal Purple, there was only one five quart container there. So I went with Castro Euro Car. Uh, it's approved. So that's what we're going with. But first, we're going to add in Saratech. Uh, essentially, I think the gist of this is. This will leave behind, or it should attach itself to the uh, to the cylinder walls. Uh, leave behind kind of a ceramic coating. Again, reduce friction. Uh, it is not a constant use, or you know, use with every oil change. Use one time, uh, and then go either just conventional oil change, or what I normally use uh, as my friction reducer is um, Liquamoly uh, I forget the actual but it's Liquamoly friction something or other it's it's grayish in color and that that's what I would so essentially what I'm recommending to my buddy is on the next oil change just go straight oil and then on the following oil change go with Liquamoly um, uh, go with the Liquamoly 
friction reducer. I, it, I forget the actual name. But I'm, I'm shaking this up to, to mix it well. And um, it's kind of uh, milkshakey or caramelish in color or cappuccino maybe. So I'll put this in first. And I believe the oil capacity is like eight and a half quarts, but I've got 10. So I think that's more than enough. Because it doesn't matter really. Well, it does matter because you kind of, you, you need to know, you know, what your capacity is. But, uh, you know, if, if you're like me and you kind of stockpile gallons of, uh, of oil uh, it, it won't matter because you already know you have enough and, and you fill it until it gets to the fill line so in theory in that particular aspect who cares what how many quarts it takes it takes however many however it however many it needs to get to the fill line on the dipstick or in some applications where you don't even have an oil dipstick anymore, whatever your fill procedure is on your BMW or your Range Rover. Or should I say your Land Rover or Jaguar, your JLR. Okay, um, you don't necessarily need to, you know, see me put oil in, but uh, again... I'm keeping the camera rolling and in this particular instant we're going with a funnel because I am still cramping good lord I'm cramping you heard was just me running a little brake clean through my funnel to get any debris out and a quick wipe down ready go with our funnel there start the pouring uh oh hold on okay start the pouring Five quarts going in. Five quarts going in. in again for our uh -oh. Okay, just had to get something to wipe my hands down with. Um, in the same manner on the GLK that you've got your dust covers, you have a 
front dust cover on, on this platform and then you have a rear dust cover. Remove the rear dust cover only. That will expose, well you saw underneath, that will expose the oil pan. Um, and again, the last thing we're gonna do is replace that dust cover. And I'm not going to show that. Uh, you, you, can, you can clearly see which uh, of those uh, uh, screws need to come out to undo the rear or let, let's say the middle because there's one covering the transmission as well so there's a front one there's a middle one and then there's a rear one you remove the rear one I'm sorry good lord you remove the middle one you remove the middle one remove the middle one okay for our noobs we have uh, a gauge here on the side this is a Oh Lord, cramp, cramp. Ay, 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 ay. Whew. Okay, it's gone. We've got a, a five quart bottle. You've got a quart gauge on one side and you've got a liter gauge on the other. We're obviously dealing with the quart size so or the quart side. So we need roughly about nine quarts uh, to fill the system. So essentially, we should only be left with one quart in this container, and it's clearly marked. So I'm going to go just a little bit above one quart. So do not go sticking 10 quarts of oil in your doggone car. Alright, let's check. Two. Alright, let's check. One and a half, and let's check. If I were to put that on the level, just okay, just above one. Now, pull your dipstick, your oil fill. fluid indicator okay and just right at max so what we will do is we will take it for a test ride because there's nothing in the oil filter housing let the fluid circulate um, and then you know after your drive cycle uh, you can check again, top it off, call it a day. And that's essentially what's happening here. Wipe off our funnel, set this off to the side. Get that out of the way. Clean up, make sure you don't have Make sure you don't have anything, tools or otherwise, in the perimeter. So, let's collect. Obviously, that needs to stay. That's our filler cap. Get that out of the way. This out of the way. Uh-oh. Keep the star of the show. Let's check up in the windshield wiper area. Okay, we've got uh, our retaining clips for our beauty covers, engine covers. 
Same thing over here. Let's just make those visible because that's the last thing we're going to do. Okay. You are fine. And then we can. You guys can allow me to come up to your level. CD nicely nicely situated another engine cover replaced and uh, let's just go ahead and call it like I said I'll go underneath I'll put the dust cover back put the side pieces back on and this crappy o-ring out of there and that's it my friends so um, uh, I guess uh, if I come around and bring myself in to the frame. A lot of work, but again, shooting the video, so um, I, I would have I would have been done with this by now. But again, you know, I'm trying to uh, do my best and you know helping out a community, whatever that community might be. Um, so uh, take your time, work safely work methodically, uh, do the best you can in um, uh, 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 reviewing what you're doing. The reviewing is not the word I'm looking for. Uh, and, and investigating what you're doing. Okay, uh, he, I've located or I've, I've found what my problem is and the part that I need to get to, it's right there. Okay, visualize. What, what, what do I potentially need to take off? You know, kind of walk through it first um, other than that uh, you know I think um, you know I've tried to lay out lay out what my intentions are uh, and until the next video uh, again I appreciate it uh, again hopefully I can get this edited to where it's you know good content or at least interesting because um, between the GLK and the 550 we're running three four hours um, so uh, thanks again, again to subscribers. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you know you're a little hurt that I don't have the Range Rover anymore, and I'm doing work on that, I can't do anything about it. But uh, if you find this content helpful, or if you know you know in individuals who have these platforms, please feel free to to recommend uh, a watch, and uh, uh, I'll I'll get better. And uh, that's it. So. All righty, friends. We are back. The um, uh, the oil cycle with the um, with the Marvel's Mystery Oil. It's it's run its cycle, so I'm just going to allow the engine to you know cool off a tad um but essentially um um letting the oil drain back down as much as possible down to the pan so like i said in the meantime let's see if we can get rid of these codes so what i mean by accessory mode with a push to start engine you with your key you know available in the car uh, one tap on the button uh, gives you the ability to you know listen to the radio so forth and so on the second tap is accessory mode that's what I mean by putting the car in accessory mode okay um, let's go back let's do another health report
I didn't realize, uh, buddy, oh, okay, so we actually did some correcting on its own. It dropped quite a few of those misfires. Um, hit up, okay, AC. All right, I knew about that. So that should always come back. Um, one of the uh, vent controllers um, or vent flaps isn't working. And that's 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 it. Okay, so let's see if we just run clear codes. Because I am hopeful that we don't have anything on the ECM side. But I can tell you, uh, you know, right off the bat, this this car is far happier. Okay, so there we go. We are clear on ECM. And that's what I want to see because when I go for the test ride, hopefully nothing comes back. Okay. Um, again, the AC should always come back. And then the head-up display, the control unit, was switched off improperly. Uh, let's go in here. Forgot where the head up display is. Um, pre default code. Okay, it's stored, so there's there's nothing really more I can I can read on that. So I'm not gonna be able to clear it, which is fine uh, because it was working when I pulled it in the garage. It was really the first thing that came on. Insulation test display yeah again I'm not sure if you can see the reflection on the the windscreen um, uh, but it fits. F2, test image, okay. F, F2, F3 is green. F4 is blue. F5, press on the button, stops the actuation. Okay. More. F6. Six is black. stops the actuation so oh, see well here let, let me see if you can see uh, did it turn off maybe <laughs> so it was just there but I can confirm that the head-up display is actually working, but again, uh, that's not, well, yeah, I just can't, here, forgive the hand.
bam, head up display. It's working just fine. Okay. But um, in the grand scheme of things, let's get out of this. Let's get out of this. Um, go back. Let's let's run another clear. Let's run another clear. Yeah, um, actually, let's run it. Let's say it run. Because, again, we, we were able to clear a lot of those uh, communications uh, errors. And, again, communication, lost communication, anything. Let me not say anything, but a general rule of thumb is when you're seeing codes with communication in the description, chances are uh, your battery is going to be the first culprit, your main battery or your auxiliary battery. Okay, but um, we had uh, we had some transmission control module communications errors. Uh, we were just full of communications errors, and all of that stuff is gone. So um, I think we've got a happy battery. Um, you can see here that even in accessory mode, uh, we're running at about twelve. 12 volts, 12 and a half volts. And again, that's without the car running. If the battery were unhealthy, uh, we'd probably be seeing some major fluctuation, you know, 39, 38 or 20 or, you know, bouncing maybe even between 11 and 12. So although uh, I don't have the battery tester, um, the, the scan tool itself is sophisticated enough that, you know, it can obviously uh, see what the voltage is, is holding at. Um, so that's a good indication. Um, again, right off the bat, uh, the car, uh, once we connected the uh, <laughs> unplugged uh, ignition coils, uh, just far happier. And even with the crappy oil in, we went from 800 even down to about 700 RPM. Um, so I'm thinking once we put the uh, some good oil in and then um, the Ceratec friction reducer additive uh, that 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 I'm going with, um, I think we'll probably wind up seeing somewhere about you know maybe 650 or maybe just holding at about 700. So um, the AC and the front door were things that I already knew about, and uh, those are always going to be there until they're fixed. Um, the output for the ambient lamp has a malfunction. Uh, that's the right front door ambient lamp so the ambient lamp is what we're talking about this um, the, the highlight or the you know the um, the mood lighting if you will that's what that's referring to um, so it is working but maybe it's kind of working um, under its you know required parameters or uh, specifications uh, enough to throw a code uh, again, potentiometer, left front center air vent has a malfunction. So uh, what we're referring to potentiometer, you could you could say the blend. Uh, it's it's a blend door. OK. Um, that's that's always been there. We still have air coming through, though. So uh, we just don't have it coming out of the center air vent. Or we could be referring to, I think there's a, a, a vent up top. Um, so again, it's, it's nothing major. Um, that's it. So um, let this car cool off. And uh, again, I'll just keep the camera rolling. I'll get it jacked up so that I can get underneath, pull the plug, drain the oil, Put the plug back in, put new oil in, button this car up, and it's done. See you in a little while. Alrighty, I am back. As you can see, I've got uh, I've got the car up on ramps. It didn't drive up because the front's too low. 
Um, so it's it's been jacked up on um, car ramps. Um, I can't quite use the tripod for this particular instant, but I'm at the point to where I am about to pull the oil drain plug and it's not the traditional bolt rather it is um it's a plastic plug so uh luckily we've got a splash shield here um and that would be just fine for um i need a little bit more light down here Okay, sorry about the camera angle. Um, let's get you disconnected. Okay. So, that's the drain plug. Okay. Um, now, uh, like I said, I've got, um, I've got a um, Marvel's Mystery oil additive in here. And what it's done, it has essentially liquefied the oil okay it's thinned it out uh hopefully we've got you know again gunk and crud that's going to come out but it's going to come out in uh a torrential um arc so hopefully i won't mess up my phone but we get a flathead screwdriver on this plug Oh, maybe, maybe it is a conditional plug. It's just covered with the plastic. But it is kind of neat that it is a flathead. So, um, I don't want to mess up any of my equipment, but, and this oil is still kind of hot, but, uh, oh good Lord, let me... Okay, I'm sorry about the camera. Okay, let's try this. Woo! trying to contort yourself. Ew. Yeah. See how see how very fluid <laughs> that is? Not oil viscostic like at all. And I know viscostic isn't a word. There we go. But you can see it's still, you know, it, it's pretty clear. Well, I mean, obviously it's dark, but not dark enough that you can't see through it. Okay. So, um, you know, it's not to say that uh, there, there was no sludge, you know, at all. But uh, um, it, it's definitely not bad enough that, uh, you know, it's just completely dark. But... Um, you know, I think it's only getting darker now because the flow is starting to slow. And if we bring the light over. Or maybe we are getting, you know, crap and crud that was uh, settled. So, either way, I'm still pretty, uh, pretty happy with the outcome here. Alright, we're going to just move our oil pan forward a little bit. And it is definitely time to, uh, to dump my catch pan. But we'll just let that drain. Actually, we're going to go up top, okay? 
Let's go up top. Oof. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. We'll go up top. Let's get this out of the way. It was only on hand tight to begin with. So... See if I have enough. Yeah. Well, I've got some pretty strong hands, apparently. Good lord. Let's put you all back in the tripod. hot. I don't know my own hand strength. Nope, no leverage there. No grip, rather. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's not coming. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Alrighty. Get our oil cap off. Oh. Okay. Again, this was sacrificed filter just to see how dirty it would actually get um, and it was kind of brown brand new to begin with so again nothing that's deposited so you know um, obviously we can't you know look inside the engine to see if we got crud in there but um, you know I'm relatively comfort comfortable that uh, you know, it, it's done some, some bit of work. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm not seeing, you know, anything that's concerning. So we're going to just run a thin film of uh, oil on the new O-ring. Take off. The old O-ring. Put on the new O-ring. Come on, there we go. Get it seated in its position. Get our new filter. Put that in, you should hear a click. Put our new filter back in. And again, I dare not show you the method in which I removed said oil cap, oil filter cap. I have shared with you what the proper tools are that you need to have. I don't know why I cannot find either of mine, but and I'll tell you what, I caught the absolute worst forearm cramps <laughs> in between pausing and my gosh power tools 
as soon as we get this cinch down over its little hump, there we go. Crampy cramp cramp. All right, uh, on on the top of the oil filter cap, you have a caption. You've got a reading. Um, it's uh, like 25 and a half, 25 and a half newton meters. That's the torque setting. Ideally, you want the uh, the filter cap wrench so that you can get um, um, your torque wrench so basically it's the um, apologies I am I am cramping something crazy um, but essentially the top of the torque wrench um, which again, I, I explain this, it's kind of like just a big old socket, but it's designed to fit, uh, each facet on this oil cap, but the top of it basically has an open end like that. So you'll be able to put your ratchet head right on it. Okay. And then, and they actually used to make the cap with that on. I don't know why they stopped making it that way. Good Lord. A, a basic ingenious design and then you take it away um, so you just put your torque wrench on top okay run it down and then 25 Newton meters which is 23 so if 23 was about 18 25 should be about 20 so 20 foot-pounds of torque it's not a lot but the reason I'm saying that is because you know the traditional oil filter the metal the metal spin on uh, the rule of thumb is you know once it seats hand tight and that's it um, again um, I'm just I'm just not going to show it so uh, be mad <laughs> be mad with me but uh, I'm going to I, I need to uh, tighten this oil filter cap alrighty oil filter cap is tight I am going to I am going to replace the air intake tube. Oh another thing that uh I can blame you all for because um, again you all you all saw it but I need, I just need to acknowledge that that I did catch uh, I forgot to um, put the uh, the rubber uh, those rubber foam insulators back under the air boxes but again that was a simple you know fix I uh, just you know loosened the uh, the clamps took the air box out slipped the insulators back in no problem okay now it's time to no don't do it yeah I know I'm going underneath to put the drain plug back in <laughs> I've never been caught with my pants down with a uh, a not replaced oil drain plug so I'll be right back Oof. And the 
drain plug is it's actually it's not metal it is completely plastic this is actually the first time i've seen a complete plastic oil drain plug but and it does have an o-ring with it and um in in the oil filter it came with a with an oil cap o-ring but not a drain plug o-ring but this one is it's 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 still very round it's very pliable uh so ordinarily i can't imagine that this wouldn't be replaced with a new one but in the grand scheme of things we're gonna stick this back in Back in and seated. We'll keep the catch cam down there and we will grab our new oil. I believe the uh Yeah, you see cash go for you uh, fluid files. It's not Mobile One. Well, got that right. It's not Mobile One. You know why? Because <laughs> actually, I couldn't find Mobile One. Um, and Royal Purple, there was only one five quart container there. So I went with Castro Eurocar. Uh, it's approved. So that's what we're going with. But first, we're going to add in Saratech. Uh, essentially, I think the gist of this is this will leave behind or it should attach itself to the uh, to the cylinder walls. Uh, leave behind kind of a ceramic coating. Again, reduce friction. Uh, it is not a constant use or, you know, use with every oil change. Use one time uh, and then go either just conventional oil change or what I normally use uh, as my friction reducer is um, Liquamoly. Uh, I forget the actual, but it's Liquamoly friction something or other. It's, it's grayish in color. And that, that's what I would, so essentially what I'm recommending to my buddy is on the next oil change, just go straight oil. And then on the following oil change, go with liquid molly, um, uh, go with the liquid molly friction reducer. Right? It, I forget the actual name, but I'm, I'm shaking this up to, to mix it well. And, um, Kind of uh, milkshakey or caramelish in color, or cappuccino maybe. So I'll put this in first, and I believe the oil capacity is like eight and a half quarts, but I've got ten, so I think that's more than enough. It doesn't matter really. Well, it does matter because you kind of you you need to know you know what your capacity is. But uh, you know if, if you're like me and you kind of stockpile gallons of uh, of oil, uh, it, it, it won't matter because you already know you have enough and and you fill it until it gets to the fill line. So, <laughs> in theory, in that particular aspect, who cares what? How many quarts it takes? It takes however many, however it, however many it needs to get to the fill line on the dipstick. 
or in some applications where you don't even have an oil dipstick anymore, whatever your fuel procedure is on your BMW or your Range Rover. Or should I say your Land Rover or Jaguar, your JLR. Okay, um, you don't necessarily need to, you know, see me put oil in, but uh, again, I'm keeping the camera rolling. And in this particular instant, we're going with a funnel. Because I am still cramping. Good Lord, I'm cramping. you heard was just me running a little brake clean through my funnel to get any debris out and a quick wipe down alrighty we'll go with our funnel there start the pouring uh oh hold on okay start the pouring Five quarts going in. Five quarts going in. Five quarts in. Again, for our Okay, just had to get something to wipe my hands down with. Um, in the same manner on the GLK that you've got your dust covers, you have a front dust cover on, on this platform, and then you have a rear dust cover. Remove the rear dust cover only. That will expose, well you saw underneath, that will expose the oil pan. Um, and again, the last thing we're going to do is replace that dust cover and I'm not going to show that uh, you you can you can clearly see which uh, of those uh, uh, screws need to come out to undo the rear or le let's say the middle because there's one covering the transmission as well so there's a front one there's a middle one and then there's a rear one you remove the rear one I'm sorry good lord you remove the middle one. You remove the middle one. Remove the middle one. Okay. For our noobs, we have uh, a gauge here on the side. This is a... Oh, Lord. Cramp. Cramp. Ay, ay, ay. Whew. Okay, it's gone. We've got a, a five quart bottle. You've got a quart gauge on one side and you've got a liter gauge on the other. We're obviously 
dealing with the quart size so or the quart side so we need roughly about nine quarts uh, to fill the system so essentially we should only be left with one quart in this container and it's clearly marked so I'm going to go just a little bit above one quart So do not go sticking 10 quarts of oil in your doggone car. All right, let's check. Two. Let's check. One and a half. And let's check. If I were to put that on the level. Just okay, just above one. Now, pull your dipstick. Your oil fill. fluid indicator okay and just right at max so what we will do is we will take it for a test ride because there's nothing in the oil filter housing let the fluid circulate um, and then you know after your drive cycle uh, you can check again, top it off, call it a day. And that's essentially what's happening here. Wipe off our funnel, set this off to the side. Get that out of the way. Clean up, make sure you don't have Make sure you don't have anything, tools or otherwise, in the perimeter. So, let's collect. Obviously, that needs to stay. That's our filler cap. Get that out of the way. This out of the way. Uh-oh. Keep the star of the show. Let's check up in the windshield wiper area. Okay, we've got uh, our retaining clips for our beauty covers, engine covers. Same thing over here. Just make those visible because that's the last thing we're going to do. Okay, you are fine. And then we can. You guys can allow me to come up to your level. Nicely situated. Another engine cover replaced. And uh, let's just go ahead and call it. Like I said, I'll go underneath, I'll put the dust cover back, put the side pieces back on, and this crappy O ring out of there. 
and that's it, my friends. So, um, uh, I, I guess uh, if I come around and bring myself in to the frame. A lot of work, but again, shooting the video, so um, I, I would have I would have been done with this by now. But again, you know, I'm trying to uh, do my best and you know helping out a community, whatever that community might be. Um, so uh, take your time, work safely, uh, work methodically, uh, do the best you can in um, uh, reviewing what you're doing the reviewing is not the word I'm looking for uh, and and investigating what you're doing okay uh, he, I've located or I've, I've found what my problem is and the part that I need to get to it's right there okay visualize what 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 do I potentially need to take off you know kind of walk through it first um, other than that uh, you know I think um, you know, I've tried to lay out, lay out what my intentions are uh, and until the next video. Uh, again, I appreciate it. Uh, again, hopefully I can get this edited to where it's, you know, good content or at least interesting. Because um, between the GLK and the 550, we're running three, four hours. Um, so, uh, thanks again, again, to subscribers. Really appreciate it. Uh, if, you know, you're a little hurt that I don't have the Range Rover anymore and I'm doing work on that. I can't do anything about it. But uh, if you find this content helpful or if you know, you know, in individuals who have these platforms, please feel free to, to recommend uh, a watch and uh, uh, I'll, I'll get better. And uh, that's it. So.